Hola, buenas tardes. Bueno, aquí estamos Jaime, el hombre de las misas, y yo para hablaros de, de WhatsApp y de otras aplicaciones. Right, this is the name of our presentation, WhatsApp Lies and Video Tapes. He is Jaime, uh, IT engineer, security researcher. He's got an MBA, uh, he's got CISP certification, CISA certification. Well, he's got black hair, red horn, Ruta. He's also got a blog, Sego Offensive. That's his Twitter. My name is Pablo Sameterio, IT engineer. I work in the IT department of Opnet, company dealing with security, uh, anti-spam, antivirus filters, etc. I also have a master's degree in security and auditing by the um, Polytechnic University, CISA certification, SIM certification. I don't travel as much as Jaime. And then, well, here we are. Now, Jaime, you have the floor. Well, after this presentation or introduction of ourselves, very quickly, I would move on to my presentation. Well, this presentation was about initially about WhatsApp only, but because things move on so fast and new applications came in, well, we also wanted to check out whether they were as secure as they said. We all know that instant messaging is wonderful for work, no one does uh, selfies, uh, no one, you know, takes photographs on itself before the mirror to send it out to your friends. This is fully secure, no one, no one ever will intercept that. Hmm? So nowadays there are many IM applications. We had Line, WhatsApp, we had Viver. How do you, do you still use Viver? One person. Well, there is only one person here using Viver. So Snapchat. Nowadays the well instant messaging is very much on. Well, we wondered. Are they actually secure? So therefore, we carried out analysis to check out or find out about vulnerabilities such as ID theft, harassment, lack of encryption, many of them. Those apparently that claim that are secure, spam, and I'm not talking about spam to send that out to your friends, but to sending out 10,000 messages in 10 seconds remote malware storage as Pablo and his colleagues discovered last year and then denial of service attacks with significant consequences. Well in the past month we just wanted to nag a snapshot chat a bit that you know that this is uh, a bit trendy now for iPhone, for Android, for every single device in the market. It's kind of a WhatsApp, but you only send images. That is to say, naked children below 18 years of age. A Snapchat sell out that they are fully secure, that no one copies the messages, that no one stores the messages. According to statistics, well, this started in the US, most of the users are US users. In the US, only few people, not very many people use WhatsApp, but everyone uses Snapchat. Well, these are the statistics in Europe and in other countries, other European countries, in terms of the use of instant messaging applications. So when you send out any type of mm, compromising message or image through these type of apps, you should Give it a second thought. A snap have says there is no effective way to store messages. I have found 13 different ways to do so. And the Snapchat used to sell that over and over again. So you had one job to do. And actually, well, it was not that complicated for me to prove them wrong. And then that should be added to a number of problems that they had last December. They received a second message as to how API worked according to a number of networks that they did. And that ended up in a leak of 4,000 million uh, email accounts. And that was not only the only problem, but according to the AP, that was the only request that you had to do to launch an snap. 
apparently you needed to have a token to impersonate a user if I want to send that from my account, but n well, not from my uh, account, but from an account that I share with my friends. So before January this year, the token, you couldn't really need it, read it, no matter whether you sent out a token or not. So what did we do? Well, we just did a testing and we said, okay, let us try to impersonate someone. And then the first account that we wanted to bring down was this one because we were sending uh, messages from, from them, you know, from their accounts. It was one way of trolling people and it was also a way to making people update themselves from different fa from a different server, but the thing is that they started to use this fix like the day of uh, of the three wise men. So in the beginning of January, the sixth of January, and then we said, well, three days before this mukon, you fixed these security issues, and then you didn't let us know. This is a very ugly thing. You know, I've been working for 15 days, then I have a demo, have a video, and then they just release a fix. They just release a patch, okay? And then, then you get worried if we release something and we don't let you know in advance either. Therefore, we had a problem. We had eight days, and we had to set to send out something that we have already sold and that Snapchat has already fixed. Then Snapchat started to uh, apologize itself, you know, uh, because of the spam, and and they said, "Well, no, people are testing that randomly." But when they did that, we found something very interesting that the request token that they were using before now that is based on the timestamp that you are sending out and this should be of single use so we created a program in Python I don't know whether you can see it or not that the dates that the tokens that we were using had been generated one of them on the 14th of January the other one on the 18th of January but the token was the same that would not be wrong if we had not been able to have used a token from December in January. And then we said, look, if this token never expires, well, with this bird prog program, I'm going to take these 41 million users and I'm going to send them snaps. And then we just launched it to the intruder option and then let us replace the field of the person that we want to address or to send the image to. And then in this case, well, we inserted 10,000. That was the top limit, the maximum limit. When a lawyer tells you not to do something in the US and they say, okay, we won't do it. And I say, okay, we will only send 1500, 1500 out, which is not bad because we have been using like the same token and we have been connecting like 7000 times from the same IP. Yes, but there were, they are so much aware of security, they just did not detect it. And they said, okay, we can send the snaps everywhere to everyone. And I said, well, instead of sending snaps to everyone, why don't I send 700 snaps per second to a mobile phone? And what happened? Well, then that it became the phone became roasted. Not only the phone and the application, but there comes a time that the phone cannot be used anymore and restart itself. And 30 minutes late, later, the, the, the phone is completely useless. And then this attack was made like a, a one month ago, and then I'm still receiving the snaps that I was sending out. We also realized that the problem with crashing phones, well, the conversation was not related to the system, but with a push notification system of Apple. So if you overdo the number of requests that it can manage, then it collapses automatically. So you can see the difference between the two manufacturers. One of the manufacturers says, oh yeah, we have already implemented security messages. And then say, no, 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 that is already fixed. I will just put a limit of uh, three per IP address. We will fix it in 30 minutes. And I said, this is okay, but I will be using like 30 machines and then I will crash you again. And then 
The solution is, what are you doing? And I said, what well, they said, well, tokens are there in order to support previous version. Why do you want to do that? Because the previous version generates new tokens. And as we were doing this conversation, then a new intermediary came in, which was Apple. And then Apple says, well, can you give us some information to find out how the push notification system works? What are you crashing? So now, in an open way, we are seeing that what if crashes is to blame to Snapchat or to Apple. So we let you know what happens. Perhaps the, pro the programs do not have any controls about the messages they, for the messages they receive. And then from there we move on to Viva. Okay, take over. Are you familiar with that? Yes, I'm familiar of uh, from it, with it. You know, from the time of BlackBerry. So here there is a person who is using Viber, launched 2010 to compete with WhatsApp, Skype, Live, WeChat, etc. Well, this is thought or designed probably for voice over the internet. So this application, we've just started studying it. Well, the research we've done so far is quite interesting. Has like 280 million users worldwide, and it was bought by Rabutin uh, for $900 million, which is uh, just like petty money, isn't it? They also ensure they say they are very secure, very secure, that they are not cooperating at all with NSA. And perhaps, yes, they are right, because all the photos, all the locations, and all the multimedia uh, data of Viber are clear. Oh, sorry, you forgot to mention that in Snapchat, in the, the HTTP headers, they give you a link just in case you want to work with them. Oh, yes, you're right. Now let us focus on the following. Well, let us go back to WhatsApp. The thing is WhatsApp, they are all the time changing uh, or, or having new updates, changing things. Well, talking about WhatsApp. Oh, no, that's the one. Well, you all know WhatsApp. A very cool application to send messages between phones. It has completely displaced text messages. It took over text messages. Therefore, providers are not happy because they want to charge some money to WhatsApp. But so far, there are no desktop versions. No one has dared to do that yet. And then we've learned that Facebook uh, has bought WhatsApp. And I say, good bounty, we take all the money, and then we will retire. But what happens? You know, WhatsApp servers on the floor. Things have not changed at all. You know, well, because it's so awful. You know, you are preparing something, you are preparing an attack, and then the servers crash, and they don't let you know about that. Well, Facebook has been really smart. Well, Facebook has really seen that being social on a computer is different from being social on a phone. And Facebook has found lots of problems, you know, took a lot of problems for Facebook to find uh, an application for a mobile phone. And I say, well, okay, let us buy it. And then the third problem of Facebook is that Facebook is starting to lose popularity. People are starting to uh, remove themselves from Facebook and that is making the shareholders of Facebook uh, anxious because they want to keep on making money. WhatsApp has uh, grown exponentially. So look at the evolution of WhatsApp versus its competitor. It has taken 430 million away uh, customers from its competitors. What has been the problems of WhatsApp? Well, same as those of everyone. Well, they did an application, and the first thing they said, well, because it is instant messaging, OK, no certificate, no encryption, and that's the problem. It is not encrypted. When people started to complain, I said, OK, let us put some uh, email 
and then the an address for the card and then the issue of storing malware on the servers that were not very happy but they didn't mention anything about it i can remember that because pablo through a, an intermediary sent them out all the information and they didn't even answer or resolve the problem well from there they had other problems whatsapp voyage you could see data from the profile of the users without being uh, being registered yourself you don't need authorization to send out spam and then they also did the rc4 update well they just wanted to take advantage of that and then well to do this phishing this malware etc but well how does uh, whatsapp operate well this is a modified version of xmpp they use XML as a language, and this is a type of notification where you see the field, the message from, the message to, but they have modified it because WhatsApp is designed for mobile devices and where data are very important in countries such as Spain. So they compact key words, and now they have an alternative protocol for that, which is, whose name is Fun XMPP. So the surf tables have been replaced by bytes. So here we have the normal possibility, and now this is the replacement of keywords with these uh, bytes. So we have a number of sequences that are important if you are interested in greater detail, or you, you just want more detailed information, please just let us know. Well, some people tell us that when they take a look at WhatsApp, they just don't see what we see. You know, this is representation of strings. If the strings are longer, um, what different bytes are used, whether depending on whether the strings are shorter or version or longer, depending also on the version. And then the 1.2 version, which was the existing one so far, authentication was of this kind. So it is easier to make yourself a table to decode each of the bytes. And what about the security in WhatsApp? Then you send out your telephone number and then through HTTPS it's connected to the server. The server receives your telephone number and then you get a text message, then you enter the telephone number, then the connection is closed and then you receive a password. The password is stored inside. That password is not the one that you use to register yourself in the server, but the server sends out a challenge to you, then you do a number of mathematical operations when you get the first 10, 20 bytes and from there you are authenticated to continue using it. On that point, well, you have to admit that you are not implementing, well, not implementing the password right away was just a relief. And then they said, mm, oh, our messages are secure because, well, NSA, you know, uh, NSA is tapping every single thing that you do. And they go and say, well, we, me our messages are very secure because they are encrypted through a system which is very cool, very good, which is uh, our C4, but they didn't realize that it had a number of errors when they implemented it. The problem was very simple. Well, are you aware of the Alice and Bob in terms of encryption? Alice wanted to send a message to Bob through an insecure channel. Then it, off it used RC4 to encrypt the, m the message. But Alice is really lazy and doesn't know how all this goes. And then to cipher to encrypt all the messages uses the same key. So when Alice intercepts the channel, eliminates the key, and then it has access to the messages. And then from in each of the positions, you can try to obtain the characters. WhatsApp said that this was a theoretical moment, but no, in the end, they changed it. So they admitted that it was not theoretical. So why do you have to kill a cat every time that Alice does that. Alice should have learned the lesson already. So WhatsApp said, no, 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 this is just a theoretical movement. You cannot do it in practice. But we could see that by looking carefully at how attack vectors worked, well, we just tried it. And then we could see that by columns, you know, the first the messages were just disclosed very easily. The first two columns are the most difficult to uh, release or to discover, but the others go really, really fast. Well, you know, please.
Well, okay, don't ask us to give us uh, our work. Okay, well, he's joking. Anyway, so this is a new version. When we were working on the new version, before Facebook bought it and issued an MCA order to GitHub, and then it took out all the programs inside. So this seems nonsense or minor, but it is meaningful. So now, instead of assuming security and trying to fix it to resolve it, they are going to cover everything that they had so far, and they will prevent people such as us and people like us to discover the messages. Okay, let us change the speaker. And now let us talk about whatever is actually important to you. Well, this is what Jaime told you. Before they used the authentication authentication protocol, we name it as WoW1 or 2, it used an encryption channel. Well, I read many messages that messages or uh, images go through HTTPS, but text messages, they go in uh, on RC4, encrypted every time you log on. When therefore four keys are generated, one for encrypting the conversation between the telephone and WhatsApp server, the other one for WhatsApp servers and your phone, and then an H mark to validate the message. Okay, so WL1, what happened? Well, the four passwords, the four keys were the same as Jaime said. Well, with the same key, you can get all the messages from RC4 password but challenge okay use this function WLS2 well here we are on HMAC so this uses four different keys to calculate H mark it is not the same as before before in the past when you got the message okay you did the H mark but now you have to take into account the number of sequences whether it is the first the second the third four bytes and then that's it, you know, HMAC. This drives you crazy when you try to do it. And then how are the keys generated? It uses the same thing as before. That is to say the password that you've got, that you were sent through HTTPS when you got the SMS and then it unites it. And then it unites one, two, three, four. Four different keys that are linked united. Oh, we have facts, what's up? How long did we take to implement that? Two weeks? A couple of weeks? So, you, well, perhaps you will have to do an update in two weeks. We are just warning you in advance. But you all know this man, Snowden, started to leak how NSA was talking to companies such as Microsoft, Yahoo, Dropbox, Apple, Facebook. Well, WhatsApp was not in the list. But surely now, WhatsApp, uh, it's on that list. And then, you know, CNA receives, you know, images, texts, etc. So the targets are United States citizens and then also people all over the world. So we started to say, okay, let us implement some mechanisms to protect ourselves a bit. Why is that? Well, because NSA is the only part of the government that actually listens. So one of the things that we discovered is was that the previous version of WhatsApp, if you send a message with non-ASCII characters, then it crashes. But the best thing is that up until you clear the conversation with that person, you cannot talk to the person to the conversation again. So this is good or good because you can really go back, you know, for instance, and repent or clear conversation. For instance, if you have insulted someone and you want to just to eliminate that. All right, on the left is Jaime's phone. It is not an uh, emulator or anything. So he gets the message out. You try to log on again, to read the message, and then you have to clear it. You have to clear it before you can talk to that person again. So therefore we said, okay, let us do an additional encryption layer. How do we do that? 
Well, we do it with information from the password, from the challenge that the server sends out to you. We put it in the middle of the conversation. We start to open up messages randomly and to say, OK, this is a text. I'm going to encrypt it with a key that Alice and Bob share. And then by the time Alice receives it, please reconstruct it so that Alice can see it. Then it co co logs on to VPN because Jaime is intercepting messages. I am behind that. OK, you cannot see me on the screen. And you see all the messages that have been sent. Challenge. Now I will log on myself. Here we go. This is the challenge that the server sends out to your phone Okay, to do the RC for later on. So these are all the messages that Jaime sent out, 28, 14. These are in, in, encrypted in wizard. And then by applying the encryption, you know, the key that you got from here, to get all these keywords. So this challenge should be negotiated in each of the sessions. But we've realized that in iPhone, within the same session, you negotiate the challenge for the next time. So we just log in. We just flip out some bytes so that none of the two realize, so that to force them to negotiate the challenge again, because we didn't want to go to, to enter the conversation, otherwise it would be impossible. So we continue, and then, well, Jaime and I will exchange the conversation, we'll exchange messages. This is the first message, okay, that is the message. Before encryption uh, and, uh, and after encryption. All that that you get in there are non-WhatsApp messages. Mm. But I hate your computer, Jaime. So it sends out the message, then the message is received. So you see a zero, so non-printable message. And this is the result, encrypted and non-encrypted. And if you don't have the key, you will get a message such as this one, a strange one. So, because we are talking about NSA, you know, with lots of uh, technic very good technical capability, and they say, why instead of using WhatsApp servers, why don't we use our own? Or, well, and we said, okay, let us do exactly the same. That's for uh, encryption. We take the message, we send it to our own XMMPP uh, server, we send it as a H but we can leave like blank spaces to notify, to report the receiver that will get a message when that happens. You know, ask for permission, you know, and reconstruct it like if it were an original message and like if nothing had happened. So we launch the program. Then Jaime logs on. We see the challenge again. Then I log on. Well, sometimes when you are making a video, what you have the feeling that it goes faster than it actually goes. He gets a message from me, and he's sending out a message to me. I hate your computer. Jaime. Next, Pablo's research will be on handling and using a Mac. Well, it will take him some time. Perhaps he will make it by 2037. Well, it is not that difficult.
Well, Roman, we promised that we will not go over time, but I don't know whether we will be able to fulfill it. All right, this is the message of Smiley. And it has been replaced by these three bytes here. So these are the bytes for any Smiley. So it's very, very important, you know, to remember these bytes, okay? It's very important for risk uh, situations, risky situations. I hate your computer. I'll give you some money for you to change it. All right, this is the original message, and this is the changed message. You know, this is the replacement made with the G's, G's later. And this is what WhatsApp servers would see. Anonymous. NSA traces metadata, that is to say the relationship, okay, well, messages between people. And we say, so that how could we do or make these messages non-direct messages between two people so that NSA couldn't intercept us or find out that we were communicating. So we did intermediary steps or jumps. So we just introduced virtual numbers for virtual servers and we were running programs that were acting as proxies. So what gets from one way, it forwards it from in a different pathway and the other way around. So on top you can see our program which is going into all the WhatsApp conversations and here we will have the client answering the messages. So on top, you've seen something red. You know it's changing the telephone number, the recipients, the, the, the receivers of the messages. So see, here you can see received messages from the source of romanticism for you. Can you see here, you see the change of the telephone number from origin to destination and this is the program. This is a program and that received the messages and then that forwarded or sent out the messages. Now, push notifications. We have also discovered on WhatsApp that often we exchange telephone numbers. Well, all the telephone numbers you've seen are fake numbers. They are neither my phone or his phone, but anyway, So what we have discovered is that the push notification of the previous phone, you still get them. You continue to get them, even if you have opened a different account, a new account. So that somehow allows you, gives you some level of anonymity. This is Jaime's phone. He is receiving the messages. And these messages I associated to my actual phone. So the push notifications are not off. So you get push notification from the previous number, then they step there as an icon, but when then when you log in, then you see that the messages that you get are for the new number. So it is so curious. Twenty five. Okay, that you log in and you have nothing. And now with the real account, you get your messages. So it is over. Well, we also realized that because we are changing telephone numbers, because we want to be anonymous, and they say, okay, we can also fake the senders. Well, day one, a public prosecutor gave a talk. And then someone said that WhatsApp messages were being used in trials as evidence. So I think this is interesting for judges because we can fake senders and we can fake conversation and then you can, I don't know, well, you can be accused of having sent out some threats without being true at all. So I sent some messages from my phone to Jaime. I changed the sender. And then I will replace that, I will change that sender, and I will 
put the name of uh, a very famous person uh, who is saying, okay, you are doing malicious activities and you have to pay like 10,000 euro fine to the police uh, forces. And now Jaime. So we continue working on that. We will start off with new clients, okay, but we'd like to finish uh, thanking WhatsApp for this wonderful uh, artwork and never fix it fixes at all, we can replace or impersonate or messages from the server, We, but this is not true, but we can use it to uh, replace the identity to troll them, to troll them, because they didn't give me, they didn't give us anything of, out of the 19 million dollars that they uh, uh, got, you know, not even a mug. So this is all from us, thank you. Does anyone has a good manual for Pablo to learn how to handle the Mac? Interesting talk. I'm especially interested in the topic because I am the IT person who's always asked, what do I have to do so that people do not spy on me? So after seeing this, if I have to recommend something to my grandmother, why could I recommend her for, uh, well, somehow secure IM uh, application? Hemlis, I think. Have you heard of that? Is that reasonably secure? Well, the question is the following. Any IM application which is somehow secure? Well, the problem is that the applications and the programs that are coming out now, are, they disappear over time. So my recommendation is to use like a pigeon or a letter well, because sometimes the encryption systems are peculiar, there are flaws. Well, there are alternatives. We are programming secure IM, Telegram. People are starting to know how it works, how messages are stored. Well, conversations are deleted automatically. That's what they say, but they are not actually deleted. The future is complicated. The only possibility would be, I don't know, having new applications, perhaps perhaps will release the code. Well, releasing the code is worthless if people do not notice it, do not pay attention to it. So we should reach kind of a balance or a break even. But I don't think that will be complicated because countries, they are really interested in tracing us, in tracing us, in knowing what we do, with whom we talk. I always talk about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, they said, OK, well, we would either have servers on Saudi Arabia and you will not be able to bring Viber, WhatsApp or whatever. And WhatsApp, I think, well, did the same thing, just left the servers on Saudi Arabia. So I'm sure they are watching on us. 